Good morning, it's 9 o'clock, so let's uh, begin. Um, somebody's got something on, on, the, uh, on the screen that I'm hearing scraping in the background, so just check that you're muted so we don't get ugly noise. Like, uh, and, and if you're going to sing along with the hymns, we want to make sure you're muted as well. <laughs> but it's okay, because I muted the piano this morning, too. Um, so, welcome to worship at whatever time of day you're, you're joining us, or week, whatever. Thank you for Terry making that possible by putting together a video and putting it out there so that it's available to people. This morning, Chris Kirst sings a solo and uh, the hymn of the day. Lynn's playing piano, in case you, you don't see her, she is over there. Um, uh, uh, just a couple of announcements. Everything went very well for polling last week. Apparently, they had a very large turnout in the building, and um, they really maintain the building very nicely. A reminder to get your reservations in if you plan to participate in the lasagna dinner that Lori Ashichek is organizing. That's coming up um, real soon, and I think reservations are due this week at some point. Um, our, our member, Sterling Link, um, has graduated from seminary and has been called to uh, Decorah Lutheran Church. He will be ordained next Saturday here in the sanctuary at Lakeview at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I can't give you more details than that, and I can't tell you um, exactly how we'll project that out to the world. Um, we're looking at Terry's work, Terry and Colin Baker are working at live streaming the service, so um, that may be a possibility. I'll send it out in an email when we know what's going on exactly, but Sterling will be ordained here um, next Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Once a, 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 a seminary graduate is ordained, actually what happens is once you get called as a graduate, then you can become ordained. You don't get ordained until you've been called to an actual site to serve um, as a pastor. So we congratulate um, Sterling and certainly keep him in our prayers um, and hope that things go well in his new new life adventure, I'll just call it that. Um, Food Pantry's been very busy and Blood Drive is coming up on December 10th, so don't forget to uh, call the Red Cross or call here to um, uh, uh, make a, uh, a donation of blood, make a reservation to donate blood. We still could use a little more money for the projector in the sanctuary. I don't know exactly where we're at, but we're not quite at the final amount. So I thank everybody who's been able to make a gift and anybody else who would like to. Um, we won't say no, and you can make that gift either by sending something to church or by going to the church website um, and giving through the Give Plus program. It's available there also. I don't think I have any other announcements, anybody? Oh, next Sunday, just a reminder that next Sunday morning, um, Spencer Pownell will be confirmed. Um, uh, will affirm his baptismal covenant through the rite of confirmation here um, during this service. So we will celebrate with Spencer and his family, Annette and Scott, and his brother Aiden next weekend. With that, I will invite us to silence everything as we prepare our hearts for worship during Lynn's prelude.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, make us like the wise bridesmaids so that we are ready when Christ returns. Give us courage to wait patiently with confidence. Move us to spend our time working for justice and equality for all your people, just as Jesus has mandated. In the name of the Bridegroom, we pray. Amen. This morning, the hymn, or whenever you're watching this, the hymn of praise is Praise Ye the Lord. It's in ELW 872. For those of you who will look at this video throughout the week, Terry will have the words available on the screen. gospel lesson for this 23rd weekend after Pentecost comes from the 25th chapter of St. Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. 
But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him. They went into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Geez, some of those bridesmaids just weren't very smart. And that's why they will always be bridesmaids and never a bride. Just no common sense. Now, if you've ever been a bridesmaid, then you know that you must, absolutely must, keep plenty of oil with you in order to keep your lamps lit up. I mean, really, who goes out to meet a bridegroom without adequate oil? Duh! Of course, this is not a story about bridesmaids or about bridegrooms, or about weddings. It's an allegory. And you know that Jesus loved using allegories, so the Gospels are filled with them. This is a story about being prepared. Preparation is so important in, in so many aspects of our lives. Now, most of you probably know that I'm a little bit anal. And so as I get within two months of retirement, I'm getting anxious about adequate preparation. I've been meeting with our financial advisor through the phone and email about our investments far more than I'm sure he'd like to hear my voice. And I'm in contact with the ELCA pension plan advisors at least weekly. I'm beginning to think some of them know my account number better than I do. And Laura is getting really sick of me perseverating on it in the office each day. Now, I've read books about what to expect during retirement. And of course, everyone and every book says that it's all about being prepared. So we needed a new computer at home. We got one last week before the monthly income becomes reduced. I also bought these new glasses. Yeah, you're wondering what's different. It's the glasses. I bought these new glasses last week while I still have a health savings account. I'm getting the piano tuned at home. I'd like to spend some more time playing piano than I've been able to during my career. And Chris has told me that I either need to find some hobbies for the winter or a part-time job. Yeah, you're right. She's afraid I'm going to drive her nuts. And so, it, because she's requested it, I have been exploring some hobbies. Maybe I'll take up ice fishing, since I love being out in the freezing cold winter and ice. Or another thought I had is, maybe I'll take up car motor repair, since one time I was actually able to find a carburetor. And then the third thing I thought about is, maybe, maybe I'll start watching professional sports, or not, Lynn. <laughs> Regardless of what happens, I do believe that preparation is very important as I approach this new phase in my life. The importance of preparation is also emphasized in that gospel reading from Matthew today. As we await the return of Christ, the reading actually feels like it should be read during Advent. Now, in that allegorical story, we, you and I, are the bridesmaids. Jesus is the bridegroom. The marriage banquet that's talked about is the life in the age to come. We call it the kingdom of heaven, or simply eternity. Because we don't know, we simply don't know, how or understand how this return will take place, or what it will look like, or when it will happen. The advice to us is that we always should be ready for it. The message is 
that it could come at any time. So keep your lamps filled with oil. The oil in those lamps represents preparedness. The foolish bridesmaids were not ready. And the author today compels us to not be like them. So what does it mean to be ready for this event? What does it mean? We don't know the time of Christ's return. We're told earlier in the Gospel of Matthew that about the time and the hour, nobody knows, not even the Son, but only God knows that. And we are told that we do not have to be concerned with trying to figure it out. Don't waste your time on it. We don't know the place, and we don't know how it will all happen. So given that uncertainty, how can ordinary Christians like you and I be prepared for the return of Christ? I think to answer that question, we need to be familiar with the whole of Matthew's Gospel. And in it, we can indeed learn some things about how to be ready. If you look at the rest of chapter 25, and you can do that at the end of the service, it tells us to be focused on others while we wait. It tells us being ready means that we can participate in good works. Now we know, strong, sturdy Lutherans, that works don't save us. But we have faith that it is God indeed alone who provides for our salvation. And when we have that faith, then we are free to do good works toward others for the sake of others. Jesus always models that for us. And then he calls on us to do likewise. We do good toward others when we abstain from bad behaviors and when we love our enemies. We love our enemies when we show care and compassion toward them. By doing all of this, We are being loyal, important word, loyal to Jesus. And that's another piece of what it means to be ready, to be loyal to Jesus. You know that when you are loyal to someone, you're devoted to them. You have faith in them. You trust them. Being loyal often means living as they do. You might model their behaviors and their ideas. When you're loyal to somebody, you don't turn your back on them when things get rough, when things get difficulty, difficult. Loyalty means you do what they ask you to do. Jesus here asks us to love God and to love our neighbors. Jesus asks us to pray for those who persecute us. Jesus asks us to strive for peace and justice in all the earth. Jesus asks us us to forgive. We are loyal to Jesus when we do the things that he does and that he requests. So if we have faith in Jesus, we trust what he says and what he does as being responsible and valuable and important and necessary. Having faith is part of what it means to be ready. You can't be loyal to someone that you don't trust, someone that you don't have faith in. So today, in this short little reading, we are encouraged to ask ourselves, each one of us, are we ready? Are we a bridesmaid with lots of oil in our lamps? Or have we come out to meet the bridegroom with lamps that are only half full? Don't be a foolish bridesmaid. Amen. The hymn today is Blessed Assurance, ELW 638. I invite Chris forward.
as we strive to be patient and vigorous while we wait. Help us to understand our call to work for justice and equality for your people as we anticipate the coming of the Christ. In this time, move our hearts and hands to use the tools you have provided to end racism and sexism and all forms of hate. Arouse our brains to join our hearts as we address immigration and undocumented workers in our nation. We pray for all those in the path of Tropical Storm Etta, particularly our human family in Central America. Give us courage to condemn acts of gun violence in our city and in the world. Bring hope to the people of Vienna. May every human being immediately take the precautions necessary to slow the spread of the virus. Make us want to keep each other safe. Bring comfort to all who grieve today, including Pastor Mary Farmer and her family as they mourn the death of Mary's brother, Steve. Bring your healing to touch to those who struggle with health, including Diane, Joyce, Georgia, Mary, Pam, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. I invite you to join me as we pray the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Our music for meditation today is All Things Bright and Beautiful, Chris Kirst will sing. Bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May Lord, may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. Thanks be to God. Amen.